Wait, you're telling me we can turn this sand into intelligence? Like smartphones, computers, and artificial intelligence? Well, not this sand, this one. It's more like a rock right now. That's quartz. You've seen quartz before. It's everywhere. Except here for some reason. But there is too much stuff in this rock. So we cook it. Mmm, that's still a rock. Maybe we make it into a soup. With the power of thunder, it makes a rock soup. Wait, what? Why is that possible? Just put in rocks and coal and an electric stick and and then this happens and this too and rock soup comes out. Can we use that soup to make intelligence? Not yet because that guy is still here. So we just turn it into air and then we are... Whoa, that's super pure silicon on a stick. We could make solar panels out of this. Are they smart? No, they just tan all day. Mm, okay, maybe if we make it less messy, soup it again, but this time we pull it out super slow. For, oh, I don't know, 140 days straight. That's monocrystal silicon. No, it's super pure silicon and it's a single crystal, which means all the atoms are aligned. Let's zoom in on it. Yep, that's a rock. Zoom in even more. It's a bunch of atoms holding hands. And because it's very pure silicon, all the hands are busy with exactly one other hand. And since electricity is basically a high five of electrons, it can't really pass through here. Compared to this piece of copper, it's a party in here. Let's get back to silicon. Wow, silicon took some blue drugs. Now it has a few extra hands that can do the high fives. Wow, this other silicon took some red drugs. Now it's looking for hands to high five. What if they kissed? It makes a silicon diode. The extra hands, the electrons, form a wall and the electricity can only go one way in this silicon. Thanks drugs. It's the silicon transistor. Wait, what? You said the diode makes electricity go one way only. So if you put two of them, the electricity won't go anyway. As is, yeah, but if you plug this in, the electrons in the wall are vacuumed through the top, which leaves an opening for the current in the main piece. The silicon transistor. It's basically a light switch that can be controlled by electricity. So, is that intelligence? No, it's just a light switch that can be controlled by electricity. Hmm, but what if we put them like this? Damn, that's a logic gate, just like in Minecraft. Huh? It's evolving. No, it can do math. That's not math, that's just a bunch of zeros and ones. Don't worry, we use this table to turn it into human numbers. Okay, let's put 684 of them together and... That's the first silicon-based computer. And it only takes 3 cubic feet. So... Is that intelligence? No, it's just a bunch of rocks adding numbers. What if we add like 2000 more? Hmm, we would need to make them super small. How about 10 micrometers? That's the size of a human hair, if the human was the size of a human hair. Hi, I'm the printer from next door. I heard you need to print something really small. We've been doing that for hundreds of years. Weirdly convenient. Let me see how you do it. All right, I learned everything. Here's the plan. We're gonna make that transistor but really tiny. To do that, we need two parts with the blue drug, one part with the red drug, and the cables connected to all three parts to control it. Putting the drugs in the silicon is easy. We can spray it on top and then put it in the oven for 15 minutes. Problem is, we need to spray it on a very tiny area, otherwise the blue and red drug will mix and we'll get... So we use a stencil, but we have to make it really tiny. So first, we draw our shape on a plastic sheet by scraping away some orange stuff. Now we have a stencil, but it's 500 times too big. We backlight it, take a picture of a small part of it with a zoom lens. Now our stencil is on the film of the camera, which is way smaller than before. It's still 10 times too big, so we do it again. And now we have a bunch of super tiny pictures of the stencil that we can tape together. Then we can use this special chemical that gets hard when it sees light. Like most of us really. It's the same kind we've had on film cameras for years. Spread that on the silicon, use a projector with our pictures of stencil on it, then rinse off the extra chemicals that didn't get hard. Now the silicon that's not covered is the same pattern that we drew on the original stencil, just 500 times smaller. If we make three different stencils like this, one for each drug and one for the wires, we can make a very tiny transistor. Put the blue stencil on, spray the drug, put it in the oven. Put the red stencil, spray, oven. Put the wire stencil, spray, wire juice. Ta-da, that's a very tiny bunch of transistors. Hmm. But if we want 2000 of these, we would waste a lot of room on the silicon just for the wires. Look, every other row here has to be wires. So what if we put the wires above the transistors? Sounds simple, but at this scale, it ain't easy to be 3D. See, we can't add more silicon because we need it to be one big flat crystal. So to go 3D, the only thing we can do is to remove some. Thankfully, with the same stencil technique, we can expose these two parts of the silicon and spray acids on it, which will effectively dig in a trench. Now we can have three parts like before, but the middle part is elevated. Then we can put our wires up here. 
add layers like that two or three times and you get the first ever microprocessor. So Intel is basically an arts and craft company making stencils. Of course the process nowadays is a lot more complicated but the idea is the same, just drawing some lines on a rock. Except the tinier you go, the more problems you get, just like with your at some point, the light from the projector itself was too big, so they had to switch to lasers, which also means they had to build the flattest mirror in the world to make sure the lasers goes exactly where it needs to go. Also, you know you dug the trenches with acid, right? Turns out acid doesn't dig perfectly square trenches, which becomes a huge problem when your trenches are only a few atoms wide. Anyway, let's wait. The chip has thousands of transistors. Should it not have a thousand cables to control them? Right, you're right. Um, let's invent a way to tell the transistors to do stuff without having to control them individually. That's computer instructions. We could go to the moon with this. Damn, that's a lot of instructions to write on the papers though. And it's pretty repetitive. Maybe we could invent a simpler code that would get translated into the instructions. Kind of like a language. The C programming language. Whoa, that's so much easier. I'm sure we'll stop here and never invent any other solution to this problem. Oh, hello. Uh, you guys weren't invited. Damn, while we were looking away, they put transistors in everything. Now we have transistors that remember things, transistors that remember things for longer, transistors that make pictures and sounds. Now we need transistors to make the transistors talk to other transistors. So, is that intelligence yet? Not really, it's still just a bunch of tiny scribbles on millions of rocks. Wait, this guy says, what if we make the rocks do a bunch of multiplications? Well, we tried that already, it doesn't do much. Whoa, he made the rocks do a lot of multiplications. So, is that intelligence yet? <laughs>